So I've got a patient here who had a partial nephrectomy about 10 days ago and she presented last night with hematuria and loin pain and as you can see on the CT she's got a rather a large pseudoaneurysm arising from the upper pole which is the partial nephrectomy site. So what I'm going to do now is a right femoral puncture, selectively catheterize the left renal artery, perform angiography and try and localize the exact feeding point from the, of the pseudoaneurysm and probably coil it, although I could use onyx or I could use glue. Um, we'll have to have a look and we'll see how many feeding vessels there are. Sometimes it's surprising you can actually get more than one vessel feeding this. So let's see how we get on. So we're just going to start with a standard five French sheath and then we're actually going to use a four French cobra because it's a small fine catheter and it's a good shape to get into the renal artery providing the renal artery is not down sloping too much. If it is I would use a sidewinder, a SIM2. We've got tortuous iliac arteries here so we're just going to take the catheter up and we're just going to advance the standard J-wire and it's going straight up the aorta. Now we're just going to take the cobra up and centre a bit higher please. I'm just going to take this up to about L2, that's fine. I'm going to take the wire out and then we're just going to pull it down and we're going to try and engage that left renal artery. And we're just going to try and hook it into that left renal artery. Yeah, okay. So it's just going to leave that about there. Can we go mag one, please? And now hold it there nice and still. Don't breathe, don't move. Breathe away. Now you can see the pseudoaneurysm very nicely in the upper pole. For, okay, stop there. So it looks like it's coming from this vessel here. It's hard to tell. Typical renal arteries, you've got lots overlying. We could oblique. But actually, the earlier image, I think, showed us our route through. So could you go back a couple of images, please? There. So we need to come around there. So at this point, we're going to go for a micro catheter. So if I could have a two French prograde, please, and a single angle Meister wire with a chewy borst, which I think we have. So this chewy borst device here will allow me to get a reasonable amount of grip on my micro catheter and still advance the wire with one hand without the catheter backing out through our main catheter. It's a very useful device. The other advantage of this, because it's got the big side arm, I can actually weigh it down with a wet swab if I have the catheter at a certain angle and I don't want it to move. Now I'm just going to loosen the chewy burst off and I'm going to advance this through. Don't advance the wire, just leave them together. I'm going to tighten it up slightly to get hemostasis. Uh, it's quite a short cuff to this, so I'm just going to advance it now and I'm going to screen and we'll just see the marker at the end of the catheter when it gets near to the end of the cobra. There it comes, you can see the catheter coming up there. And when it gets to this point, actually, the catheter actually is slightly bigger, so you feel more resistance on the chewy bores, and that's quite a useful indicator that you're near the end if you don't see it. So we've got it there, and we're going to advance it with the wire first. So we'll have the torque device on the wire, please. And because I've tightened this now, I can keep that, that will keep my micro catheter still as I advance my wire. Okay, you can let go now, thank you. So this single angle Meister wire actually has got a good degree of torqueability, so it tends to be my go-to wire for these procedures. So what we're going to try and do now is steer it into the upper pole. Uh, it's a bit of a tortuous route, but that's looking promising. But we've gone into another branch, so I'm just going to bring it back, try and turn it up towards those clips there. I think that's where we need to be. I can't believe I've got that lucky. We're probably in a different branch, but we're going to pop the microcatheter up there, fixing the wire, and we're just going to advance the microcatheter. I'm going to take the wire out now. Keep the torque device where it is. And I'll just take that contrast. You can just take it straight out, okay? We're just going to inject a bit of X-ray dye. And that is actually in the pseudoaneurysm. So I think we got lucky there. We got straight to that point. We'll just do a little DSA run to prove it. And there is the leak straight through that vessel into the pseudoaneurysm. That's quite nicely seen. Now we could actually take the microcatheter into the pseudoaneurysm, but that's not going to help us because when we put a coil in, it will just prolapse. 
I'm just going to take it in a little bit further without the wire and it's gone. So what I'm going to do now is use a little detachable coil, a hydrogel coil, because that will block it very effectively and it will give me very precise control of where I'm going to deploy it. So this is the Azure CX18 detachable hydro coil, two millimeters by four centimeters, and that's what we're going to use. Yeah, and it expires 26, which is well in advance. Just gonna take that off the battery on the locking mechanism. If you take that off, you've got to be careful because it can actually sometimes kink. You see, it's nearly kinked it when I candidly took that off. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna check that this coil is functional and that goes green, so we know that's gonna work, so that's a good one. Sometimes these get a bit contaminated and if you clean them, they work fine. So what we need to do now is take the coil out of its holder and we need to advance it into a syringe. So do you wanna advance it, Stephen? So I'm just gonna take this off the end there so it moves the coil freely. Perfect, so there's the coil, it's advanced. And once it's been in the saline, we can pull it back into the deployment sheath and that's it, that's us ready to put it into the micro cafter now. So if you take that end, I'm just going to give this a little flush. We're just going to check we're in the same position. Nothing's changed and it hasn't. Okay, now if you could advance very close to the plastic so it doesn't kink, just push that coil forward keep pushing it and that coil is now going into my catheter now you can take that plastic sheath off now and I'll advance the coil the rest of the way so I'm now advancing this with small movements so I don't kink it kink the pusher it's effectively a pusher that this coil is on you'll see it because they're very radio opaque there it goes now I'm just going to tap it out the end so a little tapping movements, and you'll see it doing the same thing at the distal end. And that is it deployed. So what we need to do now is detach it. So we're just going to pop that on there. It's gone green, one press. And then it goes green again, that's it detached. So we're gonna check that, just in case we've got a problem with the detachment. We don't wanna pull the coil out again necessarily. And that's out, so that's fine. So we're going to take the pusher out and now we're just going to inject a bit of contrast and check that that has worked. If it hasn't, we'll put another one in. Sometimes you need to leave it a minute or two to completely occlude. Yeah, and we've still got some flow there. So I think we'll take one more of those and we'll just pack it in tight. And uh, not coil that one quite as tight. That should hopefully do the job. So let's detach that. Okay, that's detached. So if the patient's coagulopathic and these coils don't work, which is unlikely, we could use, um, we could either add in glue or um, we could even use onyx. So we're gonna do a DSA run now. This will cover any, any branches that are bypassing our occlusion. Breathe away, and we're not getting any filling of that pseudoaneurysm now, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's just normal parenchyma we can see superiorly. Okay, so I think that's us finished. I'll have an angioseal, please, and we're done.